I noticed the silence. The clock in the back says 701, but my phone says 658. So I think I'll wait another minute. So just have fun for one more minute. <laughs> Welcome. We're going to have a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Roll call, please, Mrs. Garza. Yes. Chairman Williams. Here. Vice Chairwoman Kiefer. Mr. Demaria. Here. Mr. Albrecht. Here. Mrs. Sieber. Here. Mrs. Williams. Here. Ms. Doan. Here. Ms. Al Mr. Algidi. Here. Thank you, Mrs. Garza. You're welcome. Are there any additions and corrections to the agenda? Yes, sir. Under consent agenda, please add personnel, ratification of personnel. We'll do that. Thank you, sir. And before we get started with the superintendent's announcements and spotlights, I see some special guests here. Uh, Mayor Parrish, in the back. Uh, uh, Councilman Wolf. Councilman Lovejoy. Councilwoman Sebesky. And Councilman Elston. I don't think I missed anybody, but thank you all for being here. I appreciate it. I know you had a meeting last night, and you're all very busy. So thank you for coming out tonight. We appreciate your support. So the main event, well, <laughs> but for them the main event. <laughs> Superintendent's announcements and spotlights. Mrs. Radford. Thank you, Chairman Williams, uh, Dr. Newman, other members of the board, good uh, evening to you. And certainly good evening to everyone that has joined us on tonight. This is one of our favorite moments of the um, school board meeting where we get to highlight some of the awesome things that are going on in Manassas City Public Schools. So I ask that you all would join us as we prepare to recognize our Apple and Pear Awards for tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. So the school board continues to recognize the outstanding contributions made by instructional and support employees through the Apple and Pear Award program. The Apple Award is given to instructional or licensed personnel, and the Pear Award is given to support personnel. Tonight, we will begin with our apples. From Baldwin Elementary School, Aaron Hart, first grade teacher. Ms. Hart has flawlessly gone from being the STEM coach uh, to taking on the position of a first grade teacher when the staff needed her most. Ms. Hart always has a positive attitude and works rigorously each day. She tries new behavior interventions for those who may have challenges in the classroom. The staff at Baldwin says your hard work has not gone unnoticed. Thank you. From Jenny Dean Elementary School, Courtney Steele, second grade teacher. Dean says that Courtney Steele can name every student in second grade first and last, which is not an easy task. She spends the first week of school learning students' names in the grade level so she can address them properly when she sees them. She is an excellent listener, paying attention to her coworkers about their students' needs. She is, um, she is an excellent listener and uh, helps her coworkers about the students' needs, helping them find ways to teach all students. Ms. Steele is an example of what every teacher should strive to be, and the school says they are very lucky to work with such an amazing person. Congratulations. Thank you. 
Next we have from Hayden Elementary School, Victoria Savis, a uh, second grade teacher. From Round Elementary School, Karen Kroetzer, Esau teacher. Karen Kroetzer was asked to take the position of Esau team lead this year. She was willing to step up and take on the responsibility. She has put in countless extra hours this year and handled it gracefully. She is a great team player, team leader, and a patient mentor and trainer. She works very hard to learn all that she needs to know as team lead and is a quiet source of knowledge and strength to round. Congratulations to you. Thank you. And from Weems Elementary School, Dave Herbstritt, third grade teacher. Mr. Herbstritt is a great and talented teacher. He uses innovation to teach his students. He is available and willing to help not only his team, but other colleagues with whatever they need. He has worked hard to help the staff um, be engaged, become engaged by planning various events throughout the year that brings everyone together. Congratulations and thank you. And from Baldwin Intermediate School, we have Rachel Kirkland, Library Media Specialist. Ms. Kirkland is always willing to step up and help out with anything that is needed without hesitation. She goes above and beyond to collaborate with staff, making sure she incorporates their needs into her lessons. Baldwin Intermediate says Mrs. Kirkland is the definition of a team player. Congratulations. <laughs> From Mayfield Intermediate School, Dana Broski, special education teacher. Dana Broski is an energetic and motivated teacher who seeks to engage students and teachers to be excited about coming to school. She started the Positive Vibes Only Club, which writes inspirational messages and places them in classrooms. She also created the Character Cash Program to give value to the school's Bobcat Bucks. Congratulations. Thank you. And from Metz Middle School, Laura Perez, Esau teacher. Laura Perez works arduously with ESOL classes, helping design lessons to aid in comprehension and overall education for each of her classes. During group projects, she assists all groups regardless of ESOL base. When there is a need of individual or small group pullouts for additional time or comprehension, Ms. Perez eagerly remediates regular or ESOL students alike. She continuously helps increase the co-taught environment such that students seek guidance from both teachers in the classroom for assistance or instruction equally. Congratulations, Ms. Perez. Thank you. <laughs> and finally, from Osborne High School, Matt Ball, social studies teacher. <laughs> all right. Well, let's congratulate all of our Apple Award winners for tonight. move on to our pair award recipients from Baldwin Elementary School, Mirza Morales Cook. <laughs> from Jenny Dean Elementary School, um, Sil Marie De La Rosa, instructional assistant. <laughs> Ms. De La Rosa works in a first grade classroom with a hearing impaired student. She is patient, supportive, and understanding while she helps the student build confidence to help him socially and academically. She educates herself about other ways to support hearing impaired students, shares them with her lead teacher, 
and implements them in conjunction with the mainstream curriculum. She is a great asset to her classroom. Congratulations to you. And from Hayden Elementary School, we have Maricela Murray, School Office Associate. Ms. Murray has been a tremendous asset to Hayden Elementary since she started in August 2017. She is an integral member of the office staff and helps to keep things running smoothly for all staff and stakeholders of the school. On any given day and throughout the day, one can find Ms. Murray scheduling multiple meetings for the assistant principal, helping parents in the office, assisting the cafeteria monitor with an issue, helping the nurse with a student, helping a teacher, calling parents about attendance, or providing custodial staff with information from staff meetings. She is a dedicated member of the Hayden School and community, and it shows every day. Congratulations. And now from Baldwin Intermediate School, Teresa Bryson, office manager. Well, Baldwin Intermediate says, Teresa Bryson is an absolute necessity to their school family. As the office manager, she is the bookkeeper, secretary, security officer, lunch monitor, and various other roles that pop up, and she is willing to take them on with no questions. She's always ready to put everyone else, especially Baldwin Intermediate students, first. Her Husky family wants her to know just how much they love and appreciate her. Congratulations. From Mayfield Intermediate School, Nakia McIntyre, School Reception Associate. As the face of Mayfield, Nakia McIntyre is the first person parent, staff, and the community sees. Her attention to detail is stellar, and her care for students and staff is evident in the way she handles her daily task. Parents and guests are welcome to Mayfield with a pleasant smile and helpful tone. Ms. McIntyre continues to learn all about Mayfield so she can better assist staff and parents. She is a pleasant asset and a complete joy to work with. Congratulations to you. And from Osborne High School, Marvin Ramirez, Cafeteria Manager. From Round Elementary School, Maria Aguirre, uh, school, I mean, excuse me, Special Education Instructional Assistant. <laughs> Ms. Aguirre works with children with significant and multiple disabilities. She not only works on each student's educational goals, but she is also able to assist the IEP team in implementing uh, communication systems, behavioral behavioral programs, as well as working on activities to help develop their gross and fine motor skills. Ms. Aguirre also gives of her time to help the families of MCPS. She's bilingual and loves to help families in the community. She writes daily notes home to the families. This daily communication takes work and dedication, but is integral in helping families remain an active part in their students' education. Congratulations to you. From Weems Elementary School, Margot Donovan, uh, Kindergarten Instructional Assistant. From Transportation, we have Debbie Martin, Special Education Bus Driver. If you are looking for a daily dose of hospitality, there is no reason to look any further than Debbie Martin. She is always willing to assist fellow co-workers during and after work hours. Ms. Martin is not only a special education driver um, for Mayfield and Dean, she also takes care of the lot shuttle, which ensures that MCPS drivers and attendants get to their cars after a hard day of work, even during inclement weather. Ms. Martin is always pleasant and a pleasure to work with, and the department says they are lucky to have her on their team. Congratulations. Thank you. And that concludes all of our pair award winners for tonight. He couldn't be here tonight. Yes, okay. Thank you all.
right, thank you. Now we would like to recognize National School Counselor Week. The American School Counselor Association designated February 4th through the 8th as National School Counselor Week to highlight the tremendous impact school counselors can have in helping students achieve school success and a plan for a career. This year's theme was school counselors providing lessons for life. MCPS school counselors provide assistance for students with academic, career, and social and emotional development. A few of our counselors are here tonight to represent the team of counselors that serve our students. We have Carlos Ramirez. Come forward, please. <laughs> Audrey, Audrey Vasquez Rivera. <laughs> Ashley Colasard. <laughs> Shannon Kamenick. Allie Newcomb, Lori White, and Tim Tibbs. Did I miss any other counselors that are here tonight? Okay. On behalf of the entire school division, we would like to thank all of our counselors for the service and contributions you provide to the MCPS School Counseling Program. Thank you so much. Finally, tonight for our spotlights, Virginia School Principals Appreciation Week. Each year, the state of Virginia recognizes school principals during Principal Appreciation Week. This year's designated week was January 20th through the 26th. The role of the principal as the instructional leader of the school is very important. MCPS principals work diligently to help students and teachers excel, and their leadership and hard work are essential to the success of our schools. Our principals are here tonight, and we will begin with Baldwin Elementary School, Laura Goza. From Jenny Dean Elementary School, we have Tyler Faria, who is representing Kara Mills, who's on maternity leave. From Hayden Elementary School, Karis Brooks. From Round Elementary School, Andrew Wilson. From Weems Elementary School, Dr. Zella Jones. From Baldwin Intermediate School, Amanda Wagner. From Mayfield Intermediate School, Donnie Frischkorn. From Metz Middle School, Dave Rupert. Osborne High School, Joe Gabalski. <laughs> the principals have been giving the proclamation that was issued for Principals Appreciation Week, which speaks to the manner in which principals do the following. Serve as educational leaders in the state and their local communities. 
guide, direct, nurture, mentor, and impart knowledge to our students, and how they work collaboratively with teachers, staff, students, parents, and the community to prepare students to be productive citizens. We would like to thank our principals and our many assistant principals for the work they do in our schools to make Manassas City Public Schools great. Thank you all so very much. our spotlights and announcements for this evening. Thank you. While everyone's falling out, um, it's funny how I've been doing this for, I guess, nine years now, and I saw a councilwoman, uh, Teresa Coates Ellis, walk in, and Tim, I kind of felt him moving behind me, and I knew he was trying to tell me that she was here to make sure I recognized her, and sure enough, he let me know, so. Thank that you, was, so. That was Susanna's note. <laughs> okay, no, well, well, it was written. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. neat, too. And it's so. probably spelled correct. <laughs> yeah. yeah that but, but think what team was. I though. was. Yeah, we were. Appreciate we were it. So thank page. you all. And welcome. Yes. And welcome to your husband as well. And we almost have like a quorum here for city council. So Not pretty almost. cool. Thank you. All right. Um, next up on the agenda is board committee reports. And I've been told by our committee chairs we have no reports. So I will move on to board member comments. We will start with our student members. And Mr. Algidi, you have an honor of going first. Thank you. So February is School Board Appreciation Month, and I want to make sure that I take this chance to properly show my, my own and my peers' appreciation for the school board. After becoming a student rep, I have learned so much more about the work that a school board does, and I appreciate the work that they do, because it can be quite confusing sitting through some of these meetings and some of the numbers and logistics but we should take our chance to appreciate them because we have a great board and they will help set us up for a successful future. And so I just want to say thank you to everyone on the board. We, we, we appreciate your help. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, Ms. Dome. It's nice to see that everyone was able to make it through the first semester of school. I'm glad to be back here following the various weather inclements that happened too. And I wish everyone would be able to come out to meetings like this one where we're able to see all the great work that's going on in our school district because there's definitely a lot of it to be acknowledged. Looking back, I'd like to commend all that hard work from my peers and all the people from teachers to parents to those keeping our schools clean and safe. My peers and I have been able to learn in the necessary concepts that we've needed and excel in our provided learning environments. Beyond Manassas, though, we were recently able to host a group of Chinese foreign exchange students, and they were accompanied by Osborne students who hosted them. And even having them for the short amount of time, their presence brought a new, refreshing light to our school community. Osborne's girls basketball team is playing tonight, and we wish them the best of luck, although they may not need it. And the Parent Teen Safe Driving presentation is also being held tonight. Just a reminder that it's required to receive a license and pass 10th grade driver's ed. There will also be another meeting on April 11th. The Manassas City Public School Dinner Program has also begun, and I encourage everyone to look into the district's website for more information. It's a great resource to all those who are in long hour extracurriculars, 
and those who are in need of the dinner support. Baldwin also recently hosted their winter dance activity, and it was so much fun to see all the little elementary kids enjoying their family time, and it was a great service to have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mrs. Williams. All right, I do have some things, Mr. Chair. First, I'm going to talk about um, Black History Month. In honor of Black History Month, um, I'd like to present to you an uncle of a very, very close friend of mine, Emmanuel A. Lipscomb, Sr. He was the first African-American chief of foreign trade for the United States. He was the first black of the U.S. Senior Executive Service. He was winner of both gold and silver Congressional Service Awards, the highest awards given to um, actual citizens of the U.S. government. Established the in in International System of worldwide, worldwide Foreign Free Trade Zones. He assisted in the development of the Hong Kong and Korean textile industries. He was the first black editor of the American University Law Review. And he was an advisor to Mayor Walter Washington, who was Washington, D.C.'s first appointed mayor. And he was nominated by Jimmy Carter, President Jimmy Carter, to be the first black U.S. Secretary of Commerce. Um, he was described with many, many talents, and it, he was really, truly a guiding force in everybody's life that he touched. I'd like to take a moment to focus really, truly on those words, guiding force, I ask that each of us really think for a moment and determine how we as individuals can be a guiding force in our community and our workforce citywide, not just the schools, citywide, our neighbors, our young people, our students, and our schools. Um, I feel like in the past year or so, we've really had some people who have really shown their guiding force in one way or another for our school system. Our spirit here in the schools are really, really positive. Look at our basketball team. Look at our wrestling team. So then I was gonna, that's going to bring me to wrestling. Um, <laughs> when I've heard people worry about whether or not we're going to field teams. Last year, we had no idea what a wrestling team was going to look like this year. We ended up with 40 kids on the team. And the amazing part is that they, most of them stayed. That's a tough sport, as Mr. Tibb knows back there. <laughs> it is a tough sport. Um, and people that stick around truly, truly are committed to, this, the, to their community as a whole and their school and their students. Um, we just finished regionals this last weekend. We have states this coming up weekend. Four of our Osborne, uh, our Osborne wrestlers are going on to state. That is amazing. Um, if, you, if you even know anything about wrestling in this region, as Dr. Uh, Saunders knows, her son was there as well last week, um, there is a lot of competition. And it's amazing that our school district is sending four kids to the state level. So I'm very excited that this weekend at Robinson High School, uh, Friday and Saturday all day if anybody would like to go. But Andrew Holiday won states last year. He was third in the state, and he's going again this year. He won first in, in regions this year. Charlie Castellonis is second. He's going, he, he, he uh, wrestled in second place in the region, so he's going on to state. And then Ryan Donahue and my son Nate Williams are going on to state as well. They're, they both are fourth place. Um, so I'm really excited to see how many people can actually win state through our wrestling team that we thought we weren't quite going to have. Um, so, and again, with this concept of guiding force, all of our apple and pear winners, our principals, everybody, our counselors, each of you are a guiding force in this community as a whole. And, and I want, I reach out to everybody throughout the community to, to move forward. Let's talk positive, speak, and uh, do what you can do for the community to keep moving us forward. And with that, <laughs> I yield my time. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Uh, Ms. Seberg. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, <coughs> just like every day here in Manassas, um, your school board members are advocating for students, for teachers, for all of our staff. And um, in January, we go to Richmond for the VSBA, the Virginia School Board Association Capital Conference. Um, and after that, we met with Senator McPike 
I'll let Tim talk more about that. Um, but I also attended the National School Board Association's Advocacy Institute in D.C. with school board members from all over the country to learn more about our most pressing issues and to advocate for these at the federal level. Among many of these, um, some of them are, um, some of the NSBA's legislative priorities are improving the nation's infrastructure by modernizing and building educational facilities that are designed to meet the needs of students, families, and communities. Reauthorization of the Higher Education Act, HEA, so we can strengthen and build the educator and school leader workforce and support other strategies to promote equity and college access and success. Reauthorization and full funding of IDEA, it's the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, um, and advancing school safety by providing greater and sustained federal resources that are critical to school safety and to expand and access, expand access to mental health services. As part of the conference, I joined um, the VSBA Federal Relations Network Committee to meet with Senators Kane and Warner, where we lobbied for these issues. And last week, I met with Congresswoman Wexton. Overall, it was a great experience. I learned a lot. And it caused me to think a little bit differently about how I can take some of our local issues um, up to the state and federal level. I also wanted to mention that in the coming weeks, we're going to be visiting Osborne High School to talk about student representative to the school board, because Mr. Aljady will be leaving us. He will be graduating soon. And Audrey would like to continue, so she will need to re-interview and reapply for this position. But um, we'd like to have a junior and a senior as student representatives to the school board. So we'll start the process with going and visiting them in their history classes. I also wanted to mention that tomorrow night is our SEAC meeting. It's SEAC, the Special Education Advisory Committee. We meet at 7 p.m. tomorrow night on the fourth floor of Central Office. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Seberg. Mr. Albrecht. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And Suzanne, I wish I had seen you down at the National Advocacy <laughs> Institute, but I spent Saturday and Sunday in a conference room in NSA, NSBA board meetings. Um, what I can say is the passion for education. And we saw tonight recognizing some outstanding teachers and support staff and, of course, our building leaders. It takes a village to achieve the success that we get. And it's a comprehensive education. If you look at the U.S. education system compared to the rest of the world, China will graduate, the top 10% of Chinese graduates surpass the number of graduates the U.S. will graduate. Yet, they have a mono-focused education system. We have a comprehensive edu education system. It involves sports. It's the fine arts. It's not only STEM, but also English languages and other aspects. And it's that creative aspect that's allowing us to still have creativity, ingenuity, and passion in our nation. And it's why each of us needs to support education. With that, sir, I know the superintendent's got a budget to present, and a lot of people here probably want to hear it. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. DeMario. Budget tonight? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the city council for being here. Um, I'd also like to thank you for uh, putting out a funding number. Not exactly what I was looking for, but the fact that it's not um, uh, mandated where we're going with that money, I appreciate that, and I appreciate all your work. Um, it is a pain to do what you had to do to uh, fund the schools and I sincerely appreciate it. No matter how much we differ on things, um, no matter how much I yell at Pam, um, I sincerely appreciate all your work. Um, okay. Somebody told me not to talk about this because I don't like to talk about politics from my seat here. And this really isn't politics. But over the weekend, Donald Trump Jr. used the term loser teachers. 
And there's been a lot of things going on in the country, in the state, that could be brought up here that people are doing wrong. But this is against, and I'll use my teachers. And for him to use that language is just beyond belief how he could say that in a public forum because he didn't agree with some of the things that he thinks are being taught. He generalized all of my teachers as loser teachers. And I just want to tell my teachers, our teachers, that doesn't go with us. We think our teachers are our most important people in this city and we appreciate you. And not one of our teachers is a loser. Um, and that's, I'll leave that politics alone. Except when we went to Richmond, I didn't know I was going to talk about this until Ms. Seberg threw me under the bus. Um, Ms. Seberg, Ms. Williams, and Dr. Newman, we went down for our uh, legislative conference, learned a lot, uh, got to meet with uh, uh, Senator McPike. And this year, Senator McPike agreed with just about everything we said. Uh, he, uh, he doesn't always. We have our differences. I remind him of that when we meet. And, uh, but it was, a, it was a good meeting and we appreciated it very much. We got to uh, speak with the Secretary of Education and uh, it, was, it was a very good trip to Richmond. Um, and I'd like to say thank you to our great police department. Uh, Officers Grisby, Hogan, and Lawler are our SROs and they do a spectacular job taking care of our children, our staff, and our buildings. Um, I'm bringing it up tonight because over the weekend, the detectives from Manassas City tracked down a threat to our schools and took care of it for us. Um, I'm not sure how much help they got. They went into Prince William County to interview people and they found out who the perpetrator was and made sure that our schools were safe. It was um, uh, not credible, but they didn't take it that way. And our police department in this city is spectacular, and I appreciate each and every one of them. Um, and now that she took care of wrestling, uh, the girls are playing tonight at Battlefield. Did we get another update? <coughs> okay, we're down uh, at halftime, but we beat Battlefield last week, so they can come back and win again. Uh, the boys play tomorrow night against Battlefield at home. <laughs> and um, our last game was just a spectacular event, the last couple of games. The way it's done, the way the introductions are done, the way the, the, the kids, our kids, are so well mannered this year. There's not squabbling on the court. They pass the ball too much sometimes in my mind, don't they? I agree. He knows more than I do. But they, they, they are so unselfish and the fans are so great. It's a great event. And it's happening tomorrow night at 6 o'clock uh, on uh, Barry Sutter's floor in the Lou Maroon gym. And if you can get there, get there to support our kids. And everybody tells me, you know, it's great that you come and support our kids. Well, you know, I do. But I go for the pleasure of it for myself. Go and watch this. It is spectacular. Tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Sorry I took so long, boss. No problem. And I was going to be brief, but now since they all talked, I may as well talk too, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, first, um, Mrs. Keeper wanted me to let everyone know that she had an unavoidable work conflict and couldn't be here tonight. Uh, she obviously thinks this is very important, and um, some folks don't know why she's not here, but she has a work conflict, so that's why she's not here. So, where do I start? Um, Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. We missed our last school board meeting, and I was going to talk about Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, but since this guy wants to get to his budget, I won't talk too much. Um, but I do want to mention a couple of quotes that he had, because oftentimes during this holiday, people talk about him, talk about his, I have a dream speech, and that's it. Um, he has a holiday in the bathroom, not because you know, he gave one great speech but because he did lots of great things. And if you read through his writings, whether from a Birmingham jail or uh, other sermons that he preached, he preached a lot of stuff that was really prescient and uh, beyond his, uh, his time. Um, so what I did was I put out a bunch of quotes, um, some of my favorite quotes. I'm not going to read all of them, but there are a few I thought that were really um, 
kind of pertain to what we're going through today in society. Uh, the first one is that nothing in all the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. Uh, the next, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. One that resonates with me every day, um, he said, life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing for others? Uh, another one that I love, um, the ultimate measure of a man or a woman is not where they stand in moments of comfort and convenience, but where they stand at times of challenge and controversy. And I'll end here with this one. He who passively accepts evil is as much involved in it as he who helps perpetrate it. He who accepts evil without protesting against it is really cooperating with it. And if you have a chance, I know, you know we're all busy, but not just on Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, um, read some of his writings because it's really pertinent to our lives and uh, he was a great man in many ways and uh, very, very uh, bright and also had a great idea of what society should be like. Um, so segwaying to that, uh, February, as Mrs. William mentioned, is Black History Month. So hopefully you all will be doing something uh, during Black History Month to acknowledge black history. Um, I like to say, you know, Black History Month is not the only month we should look at and celebrate African Americans. Um, but it is a month that we designate, so hopefully folks will take time to, to think about African Americans' contribution to the society. Moving on, the school dinner program. I have to commend our staff who are here, um, Dr. Newman, something that I've wished that we had for a while. We implemented a school dinner program. I believe it's Monday through Thursday at Osborne. I'm not sure the time. 3.30 to 5.30. 3.30 to 5.30, where all of our students can get dinner. Um, some kids, like my kids, do a billion things and are running back and forth, like Ms. Williams' kids and like all of our kids probably. And it's great to have dinner. And some kids may not be able to have a great meal at home, believe it or not, here in Manassas City. So the fact that we can offer that is awesome, and I really commend the staff uh, for doing that, our food services staff, our administration. Um, it's something that's very important. Um, and anyone who doesn't understand the importance of that should really think to themselves why they don't. But it's really great, and I thank you for doing that. And no local money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> who said that? <laughs> I'm from the choir here. Um, moving on to Wonder Sports, we've covered a lot of them. I know swimmers had their senior night. Um, I commend them for their season. Most of the sports are over except for I think, basketball, girls and boys, and wrestling. Um, I got a picture. I try to keep up with all the sports as much as I can. So Ira DeGroote sent me a picture of the two wrestlers who um, placed at Regions. So, I mean, it's just awesome to see not only the joy in their faces, but the accomplishments we have. Such a small school doing so well. Um, so I'm proud of the, those folks. And, uh, I'm glad that Mrs. Williams can make the matches because I usually can't. And to show that I look at all sports, um, I emailed the track coach because I try to follow the track team as well. And there's an indoor track season. And she emailed me back um, about a week and a half ago. And she said they have 10 athletes advancing to regionals. The girls and boys 4x2, 4x200 relay teams are district champs. The girls are Kaylee Augustine, Azari Pack, Oasis Pack, Love Delaney. The boys, uh, Elmer Blanco, Jonathan Garcia Lopez, Nick Nguyen, and Warren Jones. Jonathan Garcia Lopez was also district champion of 300, and Zach Nowak qualifies for the regionals in the 1600, and Ben Lopez Del Pino qualified in the 1000. And a lot of the team hit personal best during uh, the meet a couple weeks ago. Um, and she said, what a great day for track and field. And we have, again, so many activities, whether it's wrestling, basketball, track, choir, and these kids are doing great things, and uh, it's great to see what they're doing, and it's great to come out and support them, but it just puts to bed the fallacy that our kids aren't great or doing great things, because we are doing great things here in Manassas. And I also got a text at my request from the choir director, who asked me to mention, at Osborne Miss Easley, 2019 center stage competition show, Feeling Good, it's going to preview tomorrow night at Osborne at 7 p.m., so we can hit the game at 6, you know, get out of there at 7, 20, hopefully, and hit the choir concert. <laughs> uh, at least that's what I'm going to try to do. Um, nine students participated in the District 9 Honors Choir at Osborne, High School, Osborne Park High School on Saturday and gave beautiful concerts. We also had a sophomore, I'm reading this, Sage McAndrew make first alternate for the All Virginia Honor Choir, which is hard to do. And finally, they're heading to Newport News Center Stage at Osborne on Saturday for their first competition at Minchville High School. So I could go on and on, but uh, this is the taste of some of the great things we're doing. And finally, um, 
when I saw all the great teachers that were here today getting honored, support staff, it brought to mind a quote that I saw a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's an old quote, but it really resonated with me. Um, and the quote was that everyone, everyone brings joy into a room. Some bring the joy when they enter and some when they leave. <laughs> Depends on the person. But it resonated with me especially because our teachers, our counselors, our folks who work every day with our kids, they bring joy to their students, to the fellow staff members when they come into the room. And that's something to be treasured, so I appreciate that. I appreciate their efforts. And kind of ruminating in that quote, like what kind of person are you? Are you the one people are happy to see or happy when you go? You know, you, hopefully you're the former, but it's something uh, to think about. And with that, I will end. So we will move on to our agenda. If I can find it here. Sure. Man, citizens' comments. I was moving, I was gonna get there. We're a team okay. up here. Yeah, I appreciate that. Next on the agenda, citizen comments. Uh, I don't believe any citizens have signed up. Are there any citizens who'd like to make comments? Yes. Um, excuse me. Um, can you sign up when she sign up when she finishes? Can you say um, your name and your affiliation yes. with the school system, and then yes. sign up after you finish? Should I do that now? I'm um, not even do it when you finish. Thank uh, you. Regina Moore, re retired MCPS teacher, 1977 to 2009, and I've been subbing the last 10 years, so 41 altogether. Um, and good evening. I would just like to say that one of your students, George C. Bell, was elected to the Me Mecklenburg County as a circuit court judge. He was also a state wrestler for Manassas City in Osborne High School. And we went, and his family and my family, to celebrate this great feat. So on behalf of our school system, I'm very proud that one of our own is, did not just graduate from here, was a state wrestling champion, and also is now a court judge. Thank, Thank you. you. Are there any other citizens who'd like to make comments? If not, we'll move to the consent agenda. Mr. Chair, I move the school board of the city of Manassas adopt the consent agenda as modified. Second. Motion by Mr. Albrecht, second by Mr. DeMaria, that the school board of the city of Manassas approve the consent agenda as modified. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it, 5-0. Next up, the discussion agenda, new business, superintendent's FY 2019-2020 proposed budget. Dr. Newman. Chairman Williams, school board members, uh, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to stand before you today to talk about the budget, the superintendent's budget, um, which is the first step in, in the process of sending a final budget over to the, uh, to the city council. Now that we, we have the majority of the city council here, I want to take this opportunity to thank them. Um, this process is a little different than any process I've ever been through um, with the, the number of meetings that we've had before we even got to this point where the hard work is going to uh, get started. Um, but the, the conversations um, were always, always positive. Um, I know that they had to take, make tough decisions. I understand that um, you know, we're not the only one that they have to fund, but they're the only ones that we're going to talk about today. And um, just that I'm appreciative of, of what they've done for us, and so I just want to take this opportunity to thank you for that. Um, the term superintendent budget is truly misleading, as, as it took everyone in our Manassas <coughs> City Public School family to put this budget together. Um, I want to start by thanking our building and department staffs, um, principals and supervisors for putting effort towards their part of the budget process as well as to our central office staff for compiling the information 
for having honest conversations. As you will see, um, you know, you, you start off with one number from the principals, and then we have to knock it down to, to what we would truly consider a budget of need, um, to then getting it down to the funding that we have, the available funding that, that we know of. As you know, that is also a ever-changing process as right now we're working off the governor's proposed budget, but the General Assembly will have to do their work and then compromises will have to take place before we get a final number. So what you're gonna to see today is based off of the governor's proposed budget. Um, as I mentioned to our Superintendent Advisory Council, our main priority when going through this process <coughs> was to ensure that we, we took care of the staff that we have here. Um, it's always great to add new staff, but our priority was to make sure that we were doing what was best for the staff that we have currently in Manassas City Public School. We also wanted to make sure that uh, we were not going to decrease any of the offerings or programs that we felt are valuable um, to our students. So once we got past those two items, which were the top priorities for us, then we started to prioritize the other items that were on the list um, for the budget of need. As Mr. Hawkins will share in the PowerPoint, uh, superintendents are required by law to present a budget of need. Um, as, I, as I just mentioned, the process that we go through um, in Manassas City is a little different because we get the local number before the completion of the superintendent budget of need. Um, so what you'll see today is not what you would see in, in other divisions where the superintendent will have the opportunity to stand in front of you and then put out a number of the requests that we will be asking from the local, um, local government. So this process is, is a little different. And when you um, go through the PowerPoint, you'll see that we have a budget of need number, but then you'll also see the final projected funding that um, we feel that we would have based on the federal government, the governor's proposed budget, and the 3% uh, um, that the uh, council was able to, to send to us through their agreement. Um, when you look at the presentation, you will also see a slide that talks about unfunded um, needs. Uh, I do want to stress that those are needs. They're just needs that we could not fund with the um, with the projected funding um, that we have right now. Um, I am looking forward to going through this process with the board, um, with our community, with the city council. As I said, this is just the first step of getting to a final budget. Um, we're gonna have several uh, work sessions with the board. We're gonna have an opportunity for our citizens to come forward to um, put forth public comment on what they value in, in our system. <sighs> And then we're going to end this process with the way it started, with working with the city council, to doing what we have to do for our students and for the community. It all goes into the decisions that will be made throughout this entire process. Um, we are one Manassas. Uh, I don't know the, the saying off the top of my head. I know that uh, Mr. Elston says it a lot, but he's talking about the one heartbeat of this. It's on the sign. Uh, Historic heartbeat of a modern, modern beat, and that's what we are. <laughs> and, uh, and, and we're going to use that motto when we're going through this process um, of a very, very complicated um, budget that, that will impact all of our citizens. But I think that if we, we keep what is important at the forefront, and, and that is the education of our students to ensure that they can go off to be positive and productive citizens, I feel that we will all be able to sleep at night knowing that we did what was best for those students. Um, at this time, Mr. Hawkins will go over the PowerPoint that we put together, and then we'll take any questions or um, concerns from anyone. Thank you. Before Mr. Hawkins has started, I noticed Mr. Pate come in, so thank you, sir, for being here tonight. Our city manager, for those of you who don't know. So good evening. First of all, I want to apologize for up front. Um, have a slight cold, so I might have to stop it from periodically. First, first of all, we're going to, uh, tonight, we're gonna to start talking about state and local funding and the, and the uh, history and student per pupil cost. 
division enrollment and demographic trends, and then we'll get to the budget and some upcoming budget meetings that we have going forward throughout this process. So, you know, you've heard a lot, I know I have, and I'm sure others have heard about, uh, there's been a lot of press accounts, especially from the governor's office, touting a renewed effort to properly fund public education, especially as it relates to teacher salaries. The above highlights, this slide highlights uh, the total difference um, in state funding from one year to the next. It's not, not that much different, although you've heard a lot saying that uh, the governor has given a lot more money to the schools. You can see, relatively speaking, it's not a lot of difference from what it has been in the past. So what does this mean to uh, Manassas City Public Schools? As you can see from the slide, the total additional state projected revenue is $1,191,000 approximately, but the cost for a compensation adjustment alone to just to meet the state's requirement surpasses this amount by over $200,000. Nothing new, no adjustments for increased costs throughout the division, only to maintain the current salary scales, which by the way may not fully uh, be competitive in the marketplace based on what other school divisions are doing uh, this year for their employees. So you have a state mandate that has been partially uh, paid partially by the locality. Strictly just compensation, nothing else, no, nothing fancy, nothing different. So then we need to see, so how is the state really doing in funding public education? This chart depicts the average per pupil funding by the state across all school divisions in the Commonwealth. This is not solely reflected to Manassas City, but across the Commonwealth. How is, how is the state actually fund public education in the Commonwealth? This chart shows that if the state had kept up with the rate of inflation throughout this period, the per student comp, uh, contribution from the state would be approximately 36% more. Just think about all the new initiatives, all the state mandates that we've had since 2006 all the changes that we've had to put up, uh, we've had to uh, contribute to, especially uh, the mandate that we had for VRS uh, that cost this division millions of dollars over that time period. But the state funding is still lagging behind. They didn't even meet the rate of inflation during that period of time. So when I know when the school board meets with uh, Mr. McPike and other uh, legislative leaders, they always talk about, please don't send any more unfunded mandates. And this is the exact reason why, because the state does not con continue, does not even keep it up with the rate of inflation throughout that period of time. So let's look at the cost per pupil, uh, the funding from the city. This document charges, charges the actual versus inflation adjusted contribution on a per pupil basis over this period of time. <clears throat> we have similar results, about 33% uh, below the rate of inflation since 2006. So let's look at a more detailed chart. In the previous slides, we've compared actual per pupil contributions and compared them to the rate of inflation. So let's break it down a little further. The chart documents the per pupil contribution from all sources by year for MCPS. You can see that the total pupil funding has been rel relatively stagnant since 2015. While the pupil, per pupil contribution from the city has been declining over the last four years, in FY20, we project a 4.8% increase in city per pupil contribution. And this is due in part to city council agreeing to increase the transfer to the schools from 2.625% to 3%. And I think it's been said several times tonight, and I'd like to say it too. We'd like to thank the city council for the efforts, and we look forward to continuing to work with them in, in improving the instructional experience for our students. So this chart documents the actual per pupil contribution from all sources. In the previous slide, we discussed the state and city's per pupil <coughs> contribution. This chart documents the, the division's total funding on a pu per pupil basis. And as you can see, for like the last four or five years in this area, you can see that our, that our funding has remained relatively flat. While as 
<coughs> while MCPS funding has remained relatively flat and has not kept up with the rate of inflation, the division enrollment has increased 17% during the same period. The division has experienced only three years since 2006 when the September the 30th enrollment has decreased from the prior year and only one time in the last five years. It's important to note that, it is, that this is a snapshot in, in a moment of time and may not reflect the true enrollment over the entire school year. All forecasting models, all forecasting models from the state and the school board's consultants predict that enrollment will continue to increase for the foreseeable future. As we all know, enrollment increases in our school division are directly tied to housing decisions made by city officials. Given what we know now, we project that the school division will have, will surpass 8,000 students by 2022. Another component of our changing enrollment is the demographic increase, is the democratic, dem, democra, dramatic increase in our economically disadvantaged students. Add this to the fact that Manassas City Public Schools has the highest ELL population percentage. Those are the students who are learning to speak English in the state of Virginia. Repeat that again, we have the highest percentage of ELL students in any division in the state of Virginia. Studies have shown that these two factors are primary indicators that additional supports will be needed in order for students to be successful. These additional supports translate into the need for additional resources to achieve the same results as other more affluent and homogeneous school divisions. So this, this chart sort of summarizes everything. So you have, you have these two lines, the red line and a, I guess that's black line. They, they are documenting our, our ELL population and our poverty levels. Two out of every three of our students, or two-thirds of our population, are, uh, are classified by the state as being economically disadvantaged and receive some form of, of free or reduced lunch. And you can see that our ELL population, both, they both are going up at a significant rate. While at the same time, uh, the amount of our funding has remained relatively flat during that period of time. Despite all of these challenges, all of our schools are fully accredited. So on November 29th, City Council received the results of a citizen survey. This survey contained responses from 404 households throughout the city. Most residents have an overall positive perception of the city. 73% of those surveyed indicated they were either very satisfied or satisfied with the overall quality of Manassas services. 71% gave positive ratings for the overall quality of life in the city. 71% gave positive ratings for the overall appearance of the city. And 68% gave positive ratings for the overall image of the city. All wonderful things that we should be very proud of and build on. But they, but they community also asked that indicated their support for changing the service levels um, for education and the police department as well. Also in that same report, the community was asked to list the major categories that should be a priority for investment over the next two years. As you can see, public education was deemed a high priority uh, by our community. As the superintendent mentioned earlier, this is a code section out of the, uh, out of the this is a, out of the Virginia Code documenting what the superintendent's duty is as far as the budget is concerned. For the annual budget, the superintendent has a responsibility uh, to provide an estimate of the money deemed to be needed for the next school year, the next fiscal year. So. On our zero-based uh, budget process, we've broken it down into different stages. All the requests, the $110,332,000 requests that we received were items that were received from all the department heads and all the schools. Once we looked into those requests, we're, our goal was to look at and determine what we thought our true needs were. So. Requests were received from the principals and the executive team and the superintendent 
reviewed every one of those requests and made a decision on what we believe were the true needs for this school division. Down to $108 million, $295,000. So then once we get to that point, the superintendent and the executive team review all the requests then we have to start making a priority list. So we know what our true needs are, and now we know what we think our projected funding is going to be. So then you have to make the choices of uh, your priorities that you want to, that you absolutely have to have right now to be able to continue on. And so we've made those choices, and we've come down to $104,363,420 based on the projected funding that we will receive from the governor's budget based on the resolution adopted funding from the city council. So, <clears throat> so let's look at what's in the budget. Compensation increase for all employees on their respective scales. This meets the state proposal. I should say, slide's a little bit inaccurate. We should say meets the governor's proposal, but I think both houses of the General <coughs> Assembly have, have signed off on that, uh, so it may be technically right. It was first proposed by the governor. Projected health insurance increase. Uh, we have not been notified yet what our true health insurance increase is this year, but we always, we've estimated it to be to uh, increase by 10%. The third item is a contribution to be dedicated to the new Dean School Fund uh, balance. We'll talk about that more uh, later, but uh, that'll be transferring $1.5 million into a, uh, a fund for the, for the new dean school, to, for the replacement of the new dean school. Additional instructional and so, uh, staff, uh, support staff to meet the, uh, the needs of our students. Here we go again with the unfunded state mandates. We've got several with, with not only with compensation, but in other areas um, of un unfunded state mandates. Classroom instructional technology, we have a huge need. Uh, uh, this world is changing very quickly, and our students need to keep up with that world. We have a, a huge need for uh, classroom instructional technology. And finally, inflationary impacts for goods and services. <clears throat> so what's not in the budget? What are the unfunded needs? So a cost of living adjustment. I know that other school divisions uh, in the northern region are looking at cost of living adjustments to their salary scale. It's important for this school, for us to, to stay competitive in the marketplace with our teacher salaries and without having a cost of living uh, increase, our, salary, our scale will become outdated over a period of time. That's what happened to us um, when we readjusted it the last time, so last year. What's not in here, unfunded needs is full funding for the Dean School projected debt. Like I said before, we are making a, um, a good faith effort by setting aside $1.5 million to begin um, funding for the de uh, Dean School uh, project. But the debt service going forward, the ultimate debt service for Dean will be much higher than that, depending on when the school is actually built. Gifted and talented program enhancement, not in the budget. That's, this has been a, a request from, from the Gifted and Talented uh, program uh, and from parents for many years, at least, at least the last five years. I'm not uh, sure if, whether it may have been much longer than that. We've had a request for part-time employee health insurance to increase the part-time employee health insurance contribution um, uh, by the school board. Additional, we are, uh, additional English language learners teachers, computer lab teachers, technology support, software re uh, request, and another one that's been on the list for many years, and that's to change from the five-tier bus routing system to four. We still have students going to school and coming home in the dark every day. And we would like to be able to have a um, time when we would be able to uh, <coughs> reduce one of the tiers. So I know it's hard to see on the screen, but the proposed CIP, this is a uh, proposed five-year capital improvement plan. Alba, can we make this bigger? I don't know whether you can make it bigger. Yeah. So we 
The proposed CIP includes $1.5 million in additional contribution to the replacement of the Dean School and, and also includes approximately $61 million in FY21 to begin the building of the school. This proposal also includes funding for 14 additional classroom trailers which may be needed to accommodate student enrollment growth. Other important features of this plan is the continued investment to keep our bus fleet within Virginia Department of Education guidelines, funding to keep our technology infrastructure up to date, and also funding to replace the HVAC system at Round Elementary and the roof at Bayfield Intermediate School. Can you make it go to the next slide, Alvin? So let's look at our revenue assumptions. So with the total all funds, from city, state, federal, you can see the funds that we anticipate uh, receiving from each of those groups. We're also, you can also see the transfer from the FY19 CIP from a million and a half dollars to the Dean, to the debt service fund for, for the Dean School. We continue to maintain a $3 million balance, uh, uh, balance for our uh, capital improvement fund. So our operating funds are roughly $112 million. That operating fund is then broken down into the food service fund and the federal grant fund, which are approximately what, 3.9 million and 3.7 million respectively. So our school operating fund, which all of all major portions of our expenditures come out of, all of our teacher salaries and um, support staff salaries come out of this, out of the 104 million 363, $420. So how does this break down by level? Almost 80% of all of our funds are a are school-based cost. I say that, but I also want you to remember, and I know that you know that the information technology services, all of these ones, student achievement, transportation, they're all going to support school-based cost. This, the 79.5% or $82,946,000 are due direct cost, solely tied back to the schools. But all of those other areas, facilities and maintenance, transportation, student achievement, all the support received from HR and, and finance and purchasing all relate back to the school cost. So how does this break down over the, uh, over the expenditures? 83.3% of the budget is in salary and wages, which leaves about 16.7% of the budget for other needs. So we are a labor intensive organization. Our strength of our organization is in our staff and a large percentage that equates, we're no different than other school divisions throughout the state, they, everyone else has. Uh, this is just the way public education is run in Virginia and 80, um, um, between 80 and 85 percent of every school board budget throughout the Commonwealth is tied up in salary and benefits. So the, on your screen now is a listing of all the budget work sessions that we have scheduled. I would like to remind the board that we did have a budget work session scheduled for March the 5th. That has been uh, canceled. We will move we will roll up everything from the schedule for the March 5th uh, work session into February 19th. We have a March 19th work session. School board is going to receive public comment on the budget on March the 12th. And then we will be presenting the budget to city council on April the 3rd. We invite, well, certainly, I hope you all will come to the budget work session, but we invite all parties to be at the budget work sessions as we decide the future of our school division. With that, are there any questions, concerns, comments? Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you to everybody for all of your work on this. Over the past 13 years, I've realized this is not easy. Um, Dr. Newman, your first time doing this in this format. Um, most of us, except for the really old guy, 
um, have only done it this way. So it's kind of a good combination here. Uh, just a couple of things, no questions. Um, $1.5 million contribution to Dean, I think that's great. I'm not 100% sure that we can afford that, uh, especially in later years. Um, we can look into that more deeply, but that's what, one of the questions I'm going to have is that if we don't have em enough in later years and we put that $1.5 million uh, in a, in a uh, savings account, I'm concerned that it's going to sit there and we're going to have Dean still operating and not have the improvements it's going to need to continue to operate. So that's something I want to look into deeply is, is the feasibility of continuing um, to pay for Dean in future years. Um, and also, my other comment is I understand the shortfalls on money and the cola, no cola for our staff is um, not surprising, but it just, it's a little frustrating that for years and years and years we try and get our staff up to par with our neighbors and if they get a cola all of a sudden we're going to be behind again and i i understand why we can't do that necessarily uh, but i just want to uh, express my frustration with that with our situation thank you sir thank you Mr. Albert. thank you mr chair i'm going to save my questions for the couple of budget work sessions that were in the presentation that's the right form for us to have, I do want to just make some observations. Across the nation, Los Angeles, currently Denver, we're seeing the impact and the stress on teachers of salary and class size. And those stresses are not unique to any one area. It's because the federal government and the state government, as Mr. Hawkins went through in his presentation, flat out aren't doing their fair share. And the burden across the nation falls on the locality to meet the obligation. I genuinely must say I appreciate, I respect, I admire the bifurcation that City Council went through and allocating more funding to the schools. And trying to be fair, I also hope that doesn't come at the expense of things that are also important to the city, like public safety. And unfortunately, our challenged population, our increased enrollment, inflation, and the need to save for that future school that we have consistently talked about, and it's not just to replace a building, it's to increase capacity to get to the fact that whoever thought the city of Manassas would have 8,000 students. That's an incredible number and it's going to happen. But all of those things make me wonder, is 3% enough? And how can the city afford what we have? The superintendent identified about $4 million worth of unfunded needs. I don't want to discuss what those are. Some may be needs, some may be wants. But if we look at that, it still is pretty much a bare bones budget. We talked about there's not a cost of living adjustment. And we went through a lot of difficult decisions last year as a board, as Mr. Demaria just said, to get to where we are. And I fear, are we starting down the same slippery slope again? So I do look forward to the budget deliberations, the discussions, and the ongoing dialogue we're going to have. This is not an easy process. And we're only going to accomplish what's right for the city by all of us working together. So thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Ms. Seabird? Ms. Wade? All right. Um, first, thank you all for thank your you. work. I know you put a lot of time and energy into this. Um, your staff, Mr. Hawkins and Ms. Miller here, um, and all the principals who put time and energy into this. Um, this is a, a vexing question. Um, from West Virginia to Los Angeles, across the country, we see teachers who are walking out and striking in Denver um, because of the lack of funding. And uh, as folks have mentioned, um, it's easy for folks to look at the city government because they're the ones who are closer. Uh, but the federal and state government are doing what they're supposed to do um, in terms of funding. So that's a, that's a big problem. Um, 
I'm an optimist, so I think and I know we're going to take what we have and do our best with what we have. Um, I wish we had more. The cola, the lack of a cola bothers me. But I appreciate city council doing what they can do to help us. I know we're all going to work together to do the best we can for the city of Manassas. So thank you for your presentation. I look forward to the work sessions where we can work together and come to the best solution we can uh, for the city of Manassas. But you all did a, a wonderful job uh, in a short amount of time. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the independent auditor's report. Uh, Mr. Hawkins. Annually, <coughs> annually Manassas City, the Manassas City School Board engages in an independent audit of its final financial records, testing whether the school division has followed all applicable laws, rules, regulations, in accordance with the auditing standards generally accepted uh, in the United States of America. Tonight, I'm proud to announce that not only did the financial statements of Manassas School Board receive an unqualified opinion, which is the highest possible rating, we received no additional comments or, or other possible concerns. I'd like to thank the finance department and the schools, uh, schools and department bookkeepers for all their diligent efforts that resulted in this outcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Any comments? Yeah, I have a comment. Um, Mr. Hawkins, you can sit there and answer this question. There were no comments whatsoever on our, on this? So it's completely clean? Yes, sir. Okay, congratulations. Uh, I know how important that is to you. I just wanted to make you say it again. Um, so thank you very much for your hard work. And it just makes everything easier when everything is done right. And, and we appreciate you and, and, uh, and Lee and everybody. So thank you. Any comments? And thanks again, Ms. Miller, for, for your, your help with Ms. Talking. We appreciate it. Okay, uh, we have uh, one item on the action agenda, new business. The resolution to fill the vacancy on the school board. Um, as you all may know, uh, Mr. N Reverend Nixon, who was elected, um, the resolution is up there on the board, uh, did not fulfill his position. So as a school board, we are mandated to make a selection. Uh, we asked for applications to be turned in by January the 18th. Uh, we received a few applications. Um, this was not an easy decision, uh, but we will go forth. So may I have a motion? Mr. Chair, I move that the school board of the city of Manassas approve resolution number R2019-03, appointing Mr. Peter O'Hanlon, a qualified voter of the city of Manassas, to serve on the school board of the city of Manassas until the, voter, until the voters fill the vacancy by election on or about November 5th, 2019, and the person so elected has qualified for the office. Second. Motion by Mr. Albrecht, second by Mr. DeMaria, that the school board approve resolution number R2019-03, appointing Mr. Peter O'Hanlon, a qualified voter of the city of Manassas, to serve on the school board of the city of Manassas until the voters fill the vacancy by election on or about November 5th, 2019, and the person so elected has qualified for the office. Is there any discussion? Yes, sir. Um, as the chairman said, this was a very difficult decision, um, but taking everything into account, realizing that this is essentially just a nine-month appointment um, in the middle of budget session. Uh, so our uh, Mr. O'Hanlon, who has uh, a few years' experience doing this already, has a few years' experience with the budget, seemed like the most logical choice until November. Again, this is less than nine months. Uh, if it was further than that, it might be different. If we have a different person elected in November, we've got a couple of months before they are sat in order to, to orientate them to what we do. Uh, but in this situation, with this timing, uh, I believe that Mr. Hanlon was by far our best choice. But the other two candidates, who I'm not going to mention because I don't know if it's public knowledge, uh, were fine candidates, and uh, we appreciate them putting themselves out there for us. Thank you, sir. Another. No other comments? Um, we'll move to the vote. Um, all in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it 5-0. Mr. O'Hanlon will be our new board member. <laughs> and on that note, our action agenda is done. Sir, I move for, for adjournment. 
Second. Motion by Mr. DeMaria, second by Mr. Albrecht that we adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it, 5-0.